Hello guys, my name is Kiki and in this video I'm trying to repair this Milwaukee M18 Fuel Brushless Angle Grinder. So I will be honest with you, I already took it apart and when I saw that the electronic is fully covered with this black potting material, as you can see everything is covered with this black potting. Also here at the back side of the battery terminal, I just gave up because I thought, okay, this is not possible to fix it because simply you cannot, you cannot get to the, the PCB itself. It is the original controller with all this potting, potting material. And then I started to peel it off. I will switch over to the other camera, then you will see it better. So I started to peel this off, as you can see here, I have a lot of this resin everywhere and there were a plastic case on it. And basically I was able to remove from the bottom of the PCB. On the sides you can still see that everything is covered, also the wires, everything are covered and the, the back of the battery terminal is also covered. But I thought, okay, let's see, here we have the, the MOSFETs. If I'm lucky and these are only the MOSFETs, I could maybe take this apart because here there are three MOSFETs and there are three additional uh, in the back of this. And then there are the one, two, three, four, five, six MOSFETs for the three phase brushless controller. So let's do some measurements here if we can find a shorted MOSFET, for example. I will switch over to my microscope. And let's do some measurement. So I put my multimeter into continuity mode and here you can see the one, two, three, four, five, six MOSFETs. So one, two for each phase and then they are switching in the predefined order to have the basically the three, three phase power for the output. These are the three motor terminals here. So it looks like this is the, the gate itself. Yes. Yeah, there is a resistor for the gate itself. And these other two are, as you can see, one of them is going to this bigger trace and the other one is going maybe somewhere here. Yeah. So we have, but you have to check if we have short between any of the two terminals. This is good. Good. Okay. So here we have a short. So maybe we have our culprit. So also here, so here everywhere, these are the gates, I assume, yes. So here the gate is shorted to the either to the source or the drain, I do not know here. So here we definitely have one faulty MOSFET here. Let's see the others. Here we have this. This is the rest, so this is the gate. Here, this is the gate. No short. And here also this one is the gate. Yes. And no short. So we might have a chance that we have a that we have a shorted MOSFET here and maybe this is our only problem. So yeah, and then just something else. When I remove the remove this potting material, so here you can see I ripped off some of the capacitors. And just here, because it they were just really stuck. Everything here was covered. You can still see that also these wires are fully covered with this with this resin kind of thing, potting material. And here also some res residues. Also here in this piece, as you can see, there are two capacitors from here, but it's not a problem. I can just remove any of these or, or measure just any of these and populate them later on. But at first our big, big problem is I'm pretty sure that, uh, that we have a shorted MOSFET here. So let's see how can I take this apart. So here I can see that they are using some, some nuts or some screws here and everything is fixed to this uh, 
to this heatsink. I will switch back to the to the overhead camera. Here you can see the MOSFETs. This is our most probably this is our culprit here. This one. And I can still feel that this is pretty solid. So I will try to remove these three screws and let's see if I can remove this entire heatsink somehow together with everything. And I will use this little plier. There is also a plastic insulator for each and every MOSFET so to, to insulate the MOSFETs from each other because they're this metal tab is connected to the same heatsink and you would short them out. But there is a back row of, of MOSFETs there, so I have no idea how will I be able to, to remove this. Maybe I have to remove the putting here and this screw just goes through and then I can lift up. Let's see. I can already see the screw there, but I'm still not sure how the hell will I remove the MOSFETs from this mess. There is also one of these insulators on this side, which, also, which is also clamping this heatsink, so at first I have to remove those. It's off. There is most probably a thermistor connected to the heatsink here, so I have to be super careful but I do not have to remove this completely because this is the MOSFET I have to I have to remove. The MOSFET is as an IRLB3034. I will check this. Yeah I killed one of this leg most probably while prying off the, the black stuff. So multimeter in continuity mode. This one was shorted before. Oh, and also this one is shorted. So basically everything is shorted to everything. Which means that yeah, this is really really dead. So let's let's remove this. I have to remove these three three pins here. Three. So let's measure it one more time. Yes, everything is shorted to everything. This is dead. I cannot see anything wrong with this toe, but it does not mean anything at the end. So let's see, I will check now which kind of MOSFET is this. I'm pretty sure I don't have this one, but I have three or four different versions. So if I find a close enough in RDS on value and current switching capability and voltage, then I will just use that one later on I will order this one. So this is the MOSFET. It's a quite brutal one. It's 40 volt and LDS one is 1.4 million which is extremely low and the continuous drain current is 195 amps. That's brutal. I have some IRF3205 which are in the same TU 220 package uh, and if I remember correctly those are 100 rated for 110 amps so just try if it works I will I will use that one and then later on later on I will replace it so this is what I have as an alternative IRF3202 as I told RDS zone is like five times higher than that one and the drain current is 110 amps so I think this will be good good to try just to try and let's see so uh, here I have the replacement part, as I told IRF3205, I checked and the pinout is exactly the same. So now I have to just mount it, I will clean up the holes here and then solder it back to the PCB. Okay, so as you can see, our new MOSFET is in, nicely cleaned up. 
So now I will put back everything together. So it's all being put together. I took care to put back all the plastic washers, everything. It's very important. So now just to try if it works, I will put it together. I for sure I have to solder all these wires back together. All these and these. And uh, I will just try without any load. And if it works, I will take it apart and I will order some kind of thermal compound to fill this fill this up to have a better heat dissipation although I think it's good enough because all the MOSFETs are screwed to the heat sink and you have a quite good airflow via the via the angle grinder itself because there is a fan and it's basically pulling air through this so I think it would be fine but I will do this anyway okay so I will now solder back all the wires. I will put it back to the case and then we will give it a try. Okay, so everything is nicely soldered together one by one. I hope these are really strong uh, soldering connections. So I have to put it fully together because the bearing is held in place by the other part of the of the housing so the only way to put it uh, to try this is to put it fully together so let's do this now Okay, so let me grab a battery and let's give it a go. What are your odds? Put your odds in the video, in the video description below. So here is the battery, fully charged. Oh, I'm a little bit scared to be honest. No smoke. Let's give it a go. It works. It works, guys. Yes! Yes! So the first ever I tried, I could fix. I am super happy about this. So, okay, guys, that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something from this. If yes, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel and I hope I see you next time. Bye!